inspiration through complete profiles. My name is Joy Turner and I am a senior consultant and trainer with Pate Group. On the phone with me today I have Jeremy Fake with Hyperfish and Simon Schwartz of Henny Penny is going to join us here in a little bit to talk with you guys about some personal experiences with having complete profiles and up-to-date information throughout Office 365. So what I want to talk with you guys about today is just the power of having complete profile information inside of your organization. Our people and our teams are really the power behind what we do every day, day in and day out. And the more information we have about our colleagues and our coworkers can really fuel that power to get productivity and collaboration going throughout the environment. If you've ever been in a situation where you weren't sure who to go to, who to talk to, who to hunt down when you need a specific piece of information, I can drive you crazy. Because you may go to Skype, that tends to be the place I go to find out somebody's title. You could open up a contact card inside of Outlook to find out who their director is or who their direct reports are. You can get a lot of information there unless that information isn't available. That's where we kind of run into problems. IT struggles to keep our profiles up to date because we have people coming into our companies, leaving our companies, the org chart changes, so titles change, management changes, there are lateral moves, moves up, moves down. It's a lot of information for IT to keep up with, especially if they happen to be the last one to know. Not that that would ever happen. One of those struggles could be a poor adaption of technology that's available. If we're not really invested in making our technology the best it can be, and to make it work well for us and what we do day in and day out, then we're not going to have a whole lot of motivation to keep that updated, to really make it run as smoothly as possible, which then again feeds the resistance to adopt that technology and make it the best and the most proficient that it can be. Then we run into problems. Maybe we emailed the wrong Bob Jones, the wrong Todd Smith, or we give access to the wrong Bob Jones. So we make mistakes. We send that email out to the wrong person or let somebody in to a site that they're really not supposed to have access to. And then we get frustrated. We're frustrated because why didn't I know that was the wrong Bob Smith? How come I didn't have better information at my disposal about them? Now I've got to go do this all over again, plus apologize and plus explain why this email got sent or why this person had access to the wrong area inside of the environment. So our pet directories really do drive us and everyone around us crazy just because of their lack of usefulness. So we're looking at Delve and I'll confess Delve is one of my favorite apps in Office 365 unless it looks like this. So I see Bob Jones here Looks like he reports to Chris Johnson. That's about all I know about Bob. Bob might be a great guy, but I have no way of knowing who he is, what he looks like. I could pass him in the hall and never know. So that's a missed opportunity for making a connection at work. Um, I just don't know anything about Bob because there's been no attempt to make sure our user profiles have any meaningful information inside them at all. I could have three Bob Jones at work and ugh, which one am I going to pick? So now I come to a profile that has accurate, complete, up-to-date information. We've got Megan here. I can see she's a director. I see she's got five years of experience in the finance department. So she knows about accounting. She's been an auditor before. She's been in the U.S. Navy. This is someone that has a wealth of information. And if I need, ever needed to make use of her knowledge, all I have to do is come here, make sure she's the right Megan Bowen, and I'm good to go. And look at how beautiful this profile is. I love Delve. I can see what they're working on. This is security trim, so if you're not familiar with Delve, don't panic. 
You only get to see stuff that your security gives you access to or your permissions give you access to. But I can see what's going on in the world of Contoso financials. I can see who Megan reports to. If she has any direct reports, I could click on those. I can see some of her coworkers here in the middle of the screen to get information about them. This is fantastic. This is where we can really start to make connections, know who's who at work, and really collaborate above and beyond day-to-day -day emails and hopefully correct contacts on, inside of Skype. So speaking of Skype, I have some of these contact cards, I'll, I'll admit, that I've run across here and there. We've got John Smith. What are the odds there's more than one John Smith inside my company? Um, he's got an email address. That's great. That's really all I know about John because I don't have any information on him. So this is going to keep me from efficiently utilizing my time to be able to communicate with John on whatever project me might be working with. I've got to take time to find out, is this really John Smith, or maybe the John I need is John S. Smith, their middle name, does he go by another name? Whereas if I have that complete information at my fingertips, I see his picture, I go, oh, yep, that's the right John, I'm good to go. Pick up the phone and call him if I need to make sure, or send him that email right now, or go ahead and have that Skype conversation with him. My efficiency here has more than doubled because I know for a fact this is the John I need to get in touch with. I love this slide. I didn't make this slide, so that's probably one of the things I love about it. I was actually on a client site recently, and I was introducing them to Office 365, SharePoint Online, and just doing a little run-through introducing these folks to what Office 365 has to offer. And I asked them if they've ever gone into Delve, because I love Delve. So we all click and we go there. They're like, oh, this is really interesting. So they're looking around, and one of the folks in the room clicks on a person, said, hey, who's this? Well, there's no picture. There's no information there, because they've not made an attempt to have any kind of user profile information inside of Office 365. So there was about a five-minute conversation about, well, is this the guy that does X, Y, Z? Oh, no, 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 that's that other guy. Well, who does he work for? Well, I don't know. Maybe if we email so-and-so, they'll know. All of these questions that were here, well, I'll say 90%, 90% of the questions that are on this slide, what office does he work in? What's the role? Where does he sit? Well, do we know what team he works in? All of these things were there, and they were questions about that one person. We had another interesting moment because a different name came up and they said, well, why is that name even showing up? He quit two years ago. Probably have those conversations at work yourself. Why is this information here? Why is this incorrect? So I've got Jeremy on the phone that's going to talk with us about some research that was done. I'm just going to throw some numbers up here on the screen. The research is going to consist of about a thousand people and just some time they spend searching where that time goes and what the productivity loss is for that company. Jeremy, talk yeah, so, to us. Yeah, thanks, Joy. It's, it's interesting. This was a, an IDC study that was done a few years ago where they went and surveyed, I think it was 2,000 different organizations, a variety of sizes, some all the way down to 100 employees and some up to nearly 50,000 people. And what they kind of hypothesized at the end of this was that there was a, uh, a big problem with people being able to discover the information they were looking for to get their job done during the day. And uh, they come up with this kind of numbers here that essentially said that in a kind of a mythical 1,000 user organization, that the average employee spends around 15 to 35% of their time searching for information. And that time spent trying to find information, uh, based on average salaries of the, of, a, of the organizations that were served day, was only $6 million a year uh, USD of time spent trying to find it. And unfortunately, um, the, the, the kind of general consensus from the people they spoke to was that only 40% of people couldn't find the information. And what that meant was is that if they weren't spending that time trying to find it, typing in different keywords or just looking through different sites and so forth, 
that um, they could have had an opportunity cost there of burning through nearly $15 million a year where they could have been way more productive and innovative and helping the company in other ways. And so the big kind of take home there for us from a profile angle was that although when you do searches, you tend to do keyword searches for things you feel like might be in that document or might be in that email or that might be in a wiki page somewhere or on a SharePoint page somewhere. But often you add a pivot of a user or a, a type of user. So for instance, if I'm looking for policy documents, I might not just look for all policy documents and if we're fortunate enough to have content types, they'll be filtered based on that kind of content type already. But I might say, show me all the content types in the last two years, uh, sorry, the policy documents for the last two years from the marketing department, but specifically from the US marketing department. Now without the profile information for the creator and the modified person of those documents, it's going to be impossible for the search engine to give that kind of information back or in most cases they just won't provide any results back because you've been way too specific in your search. So profile information is critical not just from perspective of discovering an individual based on you know, what skills they have or uh, who their manager is or what job role they have. But it's also important from a document searching perspective as well. And it's something that customers that have complete and up-to-date profiles really benefit from um, when they start training their users in terms of discovery of content. And so it'll be interesting to see uh, for some of our customers how that adjusts over time, the ability of people be able to find that information or not. And I think that even takes us to another Point. We don't really have this called out on a slide, but I'd love to get your opinion on this. When we spend that 15 to 35 percent of our time searching and then we can't find it, we know that feeds into frustration, but then not only are we talking about productivity, we're talking about job satisfaction and feeling, you know, productive at work. Wouldn't you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just the ability to get your job done. Um, I've been in companies where I've jumped into roles and uh, I get extremely frustrated when I can't find the documents from the previous people that have uh, done this role. Um, and it's because people don't file things in the same places. You can have the best taxonomy in SharePoint in the world, um, but often search is the only real reliable way to go find that content that you know, has been built in the past for something that you might be able to reuse in your current projects. And so I definitely think it reduces the element of frustration across users by having all this information in there for sure. And you mentioned roles too. That's huge. Um, I won't name names, but years ago when I was a server admin, we had uh, problems with people's past roles from two, three, four years ago still showing up in Active Directory. Um, <laughs> and people... People get offended about that because we're very proud of our titles as we move up through the company that shows progress and that shows hard work. And they go, well, why isn't why isn't my new title showing or why is this not correct? But then you mentioned it in search too. If I'm looking for a document or if I'm looking for data based on a role and my roles aren't correct, then my search results and my queries are not going to be correct. That's and the pattern we've seen there is that with Office 365, those profile informations are more prominent than they were before. And you know, Outlook shows a few things as you showed in those contact cards there with John Smith. But mm -hmm. you know, across Outlook now, across SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, all those new service areas that people are using inside of Office 365 have things like job title and the org chart manager fields. And so that kind of really impacts users when they get frustrated to see that their data is not there and completely and up to date. And also that they don't know where they have to go to update it as well. And so these numbers here that you're just sharing, uh, essentially we have a, a free analyzer that you can run that will give you a good indication if you run the report of how populated your mobile phone numbers and photos are and the uh, manager fields are across your directories. Now we don't store any of this PII information in our reporting system, but we do keep the percentage numbers so that we can um, roll that up cumulatively and see, you know, at any point in time of all the companies we've analyzed and the employee profiles we looked at, whether the mobile phone number is populated or whether the photo is populated. And right now the numbers are sitting at that um, over 86% of users don't have their mobile phone number inside of their profile. And uh, we've had a few customers go, hey, if I'm paying for their mobile phone bill uh, okay. as part of a, an employee benefit, they should have their mobile phone number in their profile so that I can contact them at any time. 
Um, so that's kind of an interesting one that is quite a common story we hear. And then the other one that comes up a lot, obviously, is the manager field. The manager field kind of underpins so many scenarios, whether it's uh, I'm submitting my timesheets and I need my manager to approve, so the workflow system uh, needs to know who my manager is, to things like the org chart is simply not going to work, or the Delve won't be able to work because it doesn't know who your peers are, because it doesn't know the shared manager you have. And so it's kind of really going to burn some time there in terms of trying to find information within the organization, uh, like, okay, well, if the mobile phone number's not there, I've got to go email people, or I've got to text people, and get on Skype. And often that can take a long time to find someone who actually has that person's mobile phone number. So we, we have some kind of calculations there that we've worked with customers in the past around that can take a significant amount of hours um, with that information not being present in the system. And I'm going to share a personal story, which is actually is going to sound rather extreme, but it really ties into this. And this is when profile information really hit home for me. Um, so I'm originally an Alabama girl. So I'm a Southern girl. So if you hear that Southern come through, that's why I'm, I'm from Alabama. And several years ago, we had some tornadoes go through North Alabama. Several. We had entire neighborhoods just reduced to toothpicks. And you may, if you're a football person, you may remember that the uh, University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa had a lot of damage. Uh, it, it was a really rough time. One of the things that happened is these tornadoes severed the, the cables that provided us power from ba Browns Ferry Nuclear Power Plant. Now, the facility that I worked at the time, we were a secured facility. We did work for the government. So our IT department had backup generators. It was a safe place to be because, you know, when the power goes out, people get crazy and there's looting sometimes. So the next day, as many of us as could gather at work. And we've got power, we've got our computers, but not everyone on our team shows up. And we don't know because our cell towers, some of them are down and the ones that are still working, I mean, they were struggling. We didn't have all of the information we needed for all of our users, but the ones we did, we were able to finally track them down, either by their address to find out if their house was still standing, uh, cell phone if we could get through, text honestly was the only way we could get through it sometimes. Hey, are you okay? How's your family? You know, you don't know how this kind of information can impact you and your organization until you really need it. Whether it's work-related, it's a safety issue if you work in the government, or any kind of job if you're out in the field, safety can come into, come into play here too. It really is critical information, and it's amazing all the different ways not having it can impact you. And Jeremy hit on all the places where profile information shows up inside of Office 365. I knew it was prevalent, but until I really looked at this slide, I didn't realize how prevalent. You know, Outlook, of course, is going to hit everything. Skype hits most things. People Hub, our mobile intranet inside of SharePoint. All of this information is funneled into all of these various apps inside of Office 365. And it goes to show how important Microsoft feels our profile information is for business continuity inside of our organizations. And if I could click the button, there we go. So over 80% of company directories are missing basic information that's critical to workplace modernization. So I've got a poll here. I'm going to go to the poll slide. So let me launch it. Let me select it. And I'm going to launch. So curious to know, how do your organizations collect and update profile information? And if you're really not sure, I've got a multiple choice option inside of the poll. I'll go ahead and put the next slide up to may give you a hint. You might think, oh, yeah, that's how we do it. So I'm just going to leave that up for a couple of minutes. And the options we've got are updated through Delve, and that's where I myself take the initiative. I go to Delve, and I enter in my information. Now, my understanding is that can take some time to populate to all of the apps. Or maybe it's updated through something your developers built. 
uh, if you're like us and you have a Mark Rackley in your organization, uh, you might have all kinds of neat things that are custom coded for your use. Maybe it's a spreadsheet. I may alienate myself when I say this. I hate Excel. It is the bane of my existence and it kills my inner child. But spreadsheets are everywhere. And man, as organizations, we love our spreadsheets. Then we might just put in a ticket to the help desk or we may use uh, some kind of custom uh, enterprise process management tool. All right. So it looks like we've got about 36 of you guys that have voted. We'll leave that here for just another minute. I'm going to go ahead to the next slide. Typically what we have found out is those existing solutions don't get us there all the way. Maybe users don't even know that there's a delve with a user profile that they can go fill out. So if they don't know, how are we going to get that information in there? Or maybe, well, I've got this form, but this form has been used for five years and I heard there's a new one, but I don't know where it is. I'm not even going to mess with it. Forms not working on mobile devices is still very common, though that's getting better. You know, maybe there's no poking or prodding of the user base to get them to go fill out that information because maybe we just don't care as much as other people do. It's just a lot of, lot of stuff going on out there. So, it looks like of those of you that voted, 40% used the spreadsheet created by HR. 40% put in a ticket to the help desk. Love the help desk. That's how I got my start in IT. And then we got 20% that use something like SAP. Okay, fantastic. Well, I'm going to pass the baton on to Jeremy. He's going to speak with us just about some specific ways that Hyperfish can kind of help out with getting this profile information up to date and into Office 365. Jeremy, I can't quite hear you. You may still be on mute. That is a very good point. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Hyperfish helps to bring organizations uh, together. Uh, much like we were saying earlier on with regards to the, the fact of kind of having the profile information show up in all those different services. And the way that we kind of help is that we help to uh, make sure that information is always complete and up to date. And the way that we do that is uh, essentially we will analyze the Active Directory or if you're in Office 365, your Azure Active Directory um, and understand what's missing in the profiles for each user or what's invalid. And so there's various rules that you can configure uh, based on the different profile attributes that you have within side of each of the profiles for your users. And then once we've kind of got that idea of what's complete and uh, what's incomplete and what's invalid, uh, we will then send an email to the user, or if we see they're available online, we'll actually send them a, uh, a Skype for Business notification. And then the user has the decision to either reply directly to the email uh, and say, oh, okay, I didn't realize my mobile phone number wasn't there, this is my mobile phone, or they can jump into our web interface on their mobile device or directly on their desktop or laptop PC. And, and so, the key with this is, is that this is an automated process. We, we understand what's missing and incorrect, and, and we do reach directly out to the user. So we're not just sending out a blanket email to the entire org saying, please update your profile. The information we're sending is tailored to that individual based on what's missing. We make it super easy for users to go and update, and you'll see that when I show the demo in a moment. And the big thing that we do is that because we're running this continually across those profile environments. If there are other systems that maybe allow users to update particular fields, or there are some systems where you can log in as your AD user and go update the mobile phone field, uh, even if they didn't go to our Hyperfish environment to update their mobile phone field and we've enforced that uh, validation across the way they type in their phone number, we have the ability to scan that and catch that change. And then if it has come from another system and is in the wrong format, we will reach out to that user to let them know that what they've entered in another system is actually incorrect based on the way that you've set up the, 
uh, compliance for each individual attribute. And so if I jump into this environment here, um, just to show you um, what that looks like, I'm just going to escape out of my uh, my demo here and jump into my just in the environment. And for those of you maybe that are in this space and haven't seen uh, this little trick before, I use Chrome profiles to allow me to have multiple different identities running in my environment. So for instance, if you're doing demos and you want to be able to demo different environments, it's a great way to do it just by using Chrome Chrome profiles. Now you can see here on for Justin, who's logged in at the top here in the top right, is that he's in the marketing department and he's got an email saying that his job title manager or department field is not complete. Now you'll see this email has been sent a while ago and in this demo environment um, I would have already have updated this particular user. But I just wanted to demonstrate the fact that I can in fact actually go through and reply to this bot. So for instance I could say in here that you know my job title is VP of product management. And, and click send. And that is a discussion that I'm ha having with the bot that's running inside of Hyperfish that will translate that email. But a lot of users aren't familiar with bots yet. We are still kind of in the very early adopters phase there. They might not know that they can send a uh, reply directly to that email because they can kind of see it's automated and maybe not think they can do it. And so most users right now are clicking on the update my profile which will jump me into this very easy to use profile page. Now again, this profile will work on any resolution, but also we have it so that it will work inside of uh, browsers as well. And you'll notice that in this case, we are also branding this based on Justin being in the marketing division of the famous Contoso environment. Now all of the profile information is surfaced here, not just from Active Directory, but also from other parts of uh, the environment as well. So for instance, my about me and skills, scores, education, and past projects isn't actually stored in AD. It's actually stored in SharePoint user profiles. Um, so if you're using Delve or you're using SharePoint people search, uh, we provide all of the profile information in one place rather than making the user go to two different systems. And with some features we've got coming in um, the next few months, we'll also be able to connect to other systems and provide show information from other systems in this one location as well. Now a common scenario is for this photo not to be here or for me want to, wanting to be able to update it. And one of the big things that we see customers doing is they'll actually go through and because they'll find a photo they like of themselves, they'll go and say, well that's a really great photo of me and I'm just going to go and basically take that. And what we do is we provide using artificial intelligence the fact that they can't use this photo because it does it has too many faces in the photo and this wouldn't be useful for people to see in an avatar inside of Outlook or in Skype for Business. So we have the ability not just to do that with um, uh, with photos uh, in this sense but also with things like cartoons uh, or pictures of my dog or my cat or um, maybe just complete abstract photos will actually enforce the fact that it does actually have to be uh, of one individual face in the photo. And you'll see there that we actually have it in a pending state in that view. Now if I scroll down a little bit here for things like f uh, phone numbers, I can provide my phone number here in that format. Now one thing I do see that's common is that you know in an in a international organization there are various different ways that I might do things like this. Now if I pasted this number in Skype for Business, what it would actually do is convert those things into its phone number equivalent. So I think it's something like 6 and uh, 9 and 7 there. And then obviously that number isn't going to work. So by having this kind of phone valid formatting that you agree is a consistent thing across your organization with your dashes, means that when I change my phone number to whatever is a relevant phone number and click save, that will get updated in AD and in my phone book and therefore um, you have this consistency across all of your systems so that if I was inside of a contact card and I clicked on that phone number to dial it, it would actually work properly inside of Skype for Business which is a common thing that we hear from our customers that is incorrect. Now in things of in terms of things like skills, we can also have it so that uh, we can provide a taxonomy of skills rather than the folksonomy that exists in SharePoint and Delve. And the difference I mean there is, is that the taxonomy is a prescribed thing. I can't go and create my own skills here. I have to pick 
from an existing list. So I'm also wanting to be known as a mentor within my organization as well. And when I click save here, um, that will actually go into a pending state. So unlike things like Delve or my SharePoint user profile page, where when I go and change my data, it instantly goes and updates, you can see that now I have this approval step as well as that validation that I can only pick from certain skills. Now, as an administrator, if I log in to my uh, admin section here and just sign in, what you'll actually see inside of uh, his screen, in this case, is that it gives me a high-level dashboard of how my organization is doing. Now, this organization isn't doing too great. Only 11% of the organization has basic information complete. And you can see that uh, my graph over time is trending, that it's dropped down. And the reason for that is we've had, a, in this scenario, which is very common, we've had an influx of new employees um, enter the organization uh, from an acquisition that's happened, and none of their profile information has been populated. And so you can start to see things, unfortunately, like that only 3% of or 4% of profile pictures are complete within this particular organization. And so this gives me an idea not only to give a, a sense for where we are as a complete and up-to-date in the organization and to be compliant as well, but also just how that's trending over time and how Hyperfish is helping. Now, as an improver, I will be notified via email, but I can also come into uh, the interface directly and see now that Justin's changes have been provided, and in this case, I've changed the photo from the same to the same there. Um, so I am actually going to reject that change. But my phone number has changed, and I can see that I've added a, a new mentoring skill here. And so if I click there, I can actually approve all of Justin's changes in one go. And so this allows the step now that um, if I go over to my uh, event log, is that that's actually going to start showing me that those changes have actually been committed um, into um, the SharePoint user profiles and uh, any other systems that it needs to be written to. And so, for instance, you can see here that uh, Jeremy Thake, the administrator, has approved those, those particular changes. So we have the ability to kind of have that auditability for all those profile dates, updates that come through. And I could do things like in my profile updates um, only show the changes um, that Justin has had within the system. And obviously this is one of my demo accounts, so Justin does get a lot of changes come through. And this gives me a great audit trail of things that are happening with inside of my profiles in the organization. Now, as an administrator, uh, we've made this as simple to set up as possible. And Basically, we give you a default set of attributes which are mapped basically to what's available inside of Active Directory and, and what we know is present across of uh, both contact cards in Outlook and Skype for Business and SharePoint and OneDrive and all those places that we are aware this information is surfaced. And so, for instance, as an example, you can see here that my work phone and mobile phone have a particular format applied to them, which is the phone format. And if I just go look at those formats quickly, you'll see that we're actually using um, a very simple regular expression, and we provide sample ones here, but this gives people the ultimate flexibility that, uh, in this case, I want a three, three, three-digit numbers, and then three, a dash, and then another three, and another four. But um, we could have, have things like plus plus country codes at the beginning, or even extension numbers if we choose to. So there's a lot of flexibility there in that sense. And then from a skills aspect, we have the ability to provide the list of skills that are available, and we have a mechanism for bulk adding taxonomies in here as well. So you can really control control these things. Now the interesting bit here is, is although mentoring was stored for a skill there um, inside of um, the system, if I went and deleted that outside of here and click save, the next time my analyzer runs, if it saw that a individual had mentoring as a skill, because that's not a valid skill anymore, it would actually reach out to them and let them know that they need to update their profile because they've got skills listed that are not appropriate. And that would be the same as if they went to delve directly and added a skill that wasn't within the taxonomy that you provided there. So this gives that idea of being able to kind of validate that that's kind of being forced from a compliance perspective because we're always monitoring the profiles in the system. Now, we have the flexibility to choose to, in some cases, approve certain information automatically, as well as kind of have that a gated approval. And we can even define that maybe we want uh, Clark here to approve the department job title manager fields 
um, but we want Didier here to uh, look after the about me field for instance so you can start to delegate and spread the workload of who has to look after certain things it's very common for the office managers to be the ones that um, actually approve the photos for the people in their local office for instance um, we allow you as you as you saw in the demos there to have different branding in there but what we did notice over time is that there are often different types of people in the organization so for instance we have the ability via um, uh, an organizational unit definition in Active Directory or via uh, a matching of attribute values to essentially say look if they're in this particular set of OUs whether it's the help desk team or maybe it's the inside sales and outside sales teams in the different department uh, division locations that we're going to have slightly different attributes that we collect so for the sales team, you'll see there's an asterisk there, and if I click through, what you'll see is, is that not only are we collecting the, um, the default information we want in terms of phone numbers and the managers and job titles, but in this instance, we're actually collecting the company name and the sales region that salesperson works in. And that can be used then, for instance, to create automatically dynamic groups. Uh, inside of Office 365 and inside of Exchange that if I want to email a group of people once they've set their sales region it's electing them to be in those certain distribution lists or electing them to be in those certain Microsoft Teams groups in an automated way and obviously because we've got that approval in place we can make sure that people are adding themselves to sales regions they shouldn't be in and having their managers or their sales division owners to make those decisions on what's been approved and that's how we can do things like branding being different across different groups of people and even have different approvers based on which users are in which divisions or departments or what locations they're in across different countries and so forth. So we have that flexibility to treat users differently based on the profile of, of the individual. So hopefully that gives you a, a bit of an idea about how Hyperfish can help based on the fact that we automate the an analysis and in real time monitor it um, but also then to kind of allow you to use it to easily update their information um, through the browser or directly through the email interface. So um, Henny Penny is actually a, uh, a customer of ours and I'm really uh, excited to have Simon talk a little bit about how he's helped, uh, how this has helped him as an infrastructure support analyst to make sure that Henny Penny have complete and up-to-date profile information. So Simon, um, ha thank you for joining the call and um, I, I guess it would be great to introduce yourself and um, to kind of tell the story of how Hyperfish is helping you. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. Um, uh, so I'm Simon Swartz. I work at Henny Penny as infrastructure analysis. We are a uh, small but growing quickly um, company. Uh, sorry, here we go. See the PowerPoint? Yes, we can see your screen. Yep. Okay, good. Um, so Henny Penny is a growing company. So keeping profile information. Um, update is critical. Um, we're growing, titles are changing, uh, people are getting promoted, and just just growing all across the board. Um, very good poll there. Um, we actually are, we take employee requests at the help desk level. Um, it's actually a team effort with HR, and we do have a business process in the back end. Um, so that's great. Let's see here. some difficulties getting the PowerPoint to work here. Um, original problem, uh, so going into, uh, we, we had uh, SharePoint on-prem uh, 2013. Uh, we were using, we were starting to use pictures there, we'll just keep it basic. Uh, pictures were very important as we were hiring new people. Uh, we didn't. We couldn't put faces with names uh, going forward. Um, we moved to Office 365. Uh, started out with our Exchange environment, and we had troubles with picture requirements uh, between SharePoint and Exchange. Uh, once we moved SharePoint online uh, recently, um, this became more evident. We had to fix a problem, and Hyperfish has definitely stepped up and fixed uh, a huge problem we had, which was picture requirements. We didn't know. Keeping up with Microsoft's changes, we all understand that that is always a, 
going to be a problem going forward and just keeping up with the requirements of photos and making sure it's sync uh, across the board. Um, Delve is now our new org OU organization place to look up employee information. Um, so keeping profile photos up to date, uh, adding them during the new hire process. Um, right now, this is the sole responsibility of IT. So um, we get a new user request in through the help desk. User account gets profile. All, all that user information gets created. Um, this can be cumbersome at, at, for 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 the help desk especially. Um, and it's a team effort between HR to submit the proper information for us to update. And Hyperfish has that has helped us out a lot um, and bringing inconsistent data to the table and us uh, updating that information. Obviously, it's a problem. It used to be a manual process, time consuming, a lot of scripts, PowerShell scripts, um, making sure that the resolution was right, wasn't too, the, the picture wasn't too big for, for it to upload to Office 365 and stuff and all those um, nuances. Um, for, for now, the help, Hyperfish has helped us a lot with time saving. Uh, making it more efficient. Um, we're getting better consistent data. We're still on the early phases of deploying it. Um, still trying to figure out what information we want to put out there and make users required um, um, so we can help fill out that Delve chart and make sure everybody's user information is there, um, providing um, users quick and efficient way of finding that information. Um, it is going it is part of our onboarding process now. Um, and we're, we're, the service desk at the moment is getting the, the profile pictures and, and they can currently upload those profiles using Hyperfish. Um, and it, it makes it a real easy process, uh, less time consuming, um, and it's more of a click, crop the picture, and upload the picture just to keep it simple. Uh, that's pretty quick for us. Um, I discovered uh, Hyperfish a long time ago. I brought it to the table uh, at Haney Penny. Talked to our team here, and um, we we thought we gave it a, give it a try early on. Um, they, Hyperfish has been really uh, flexible uh, as far as feedback and new feature requests. Um, recently, um, huge product uh, evolution uh, for the excluding, including OUs, uh, visualization of our AD, that's huge for us. Uh, we have a structure that we obviously can't change overnight to, uh, and including and excluding OUs is a big, huge um, benefit for us uh, as far as features go, um, because we have a structure that's been around for years, and um, changing it, it was a was kind of, it, we knew it wasn't going to happen real quick, so um, this has actually sped up the implementation process uh, for including Hyperfish in, into our on hiring process and user procurement. Um, here's just a just example of what you would see uh, inside the uh, administration console, um, the admin portal. Very easy to use, as you can see, including certain OUs. Um, Sometimes we would have consultant OUs within uh, specific departments, um, and we didn't want to include those because we don't want our consultants getting the Hyperfish email, our Hyperbot emails, um, to modify their information. It's not necessary. So that's kind of neat, a uh, good example for, for from our perspective, uh, what we had uh, as a use case. Um, and then going forward, we plan on using the collections. Uh, we haven't quite dived into that yet. Um, we're just trying to get the, the basic information out there first and then um, hopefully get the users more involved. Um, that will obviously increase the photos. Um, for example, um, user profiles, a lot of stuff, the back end process, the email, users, first and last name, all that stuff is in the in our um, JD Edwards platform so that syncs over to Active Directory which makes that stuff more efficient for us, um, but the other information we are actually that's very manual. So Hyperfish has filled that gap for us and make it easier for us to centrally manage that software or that information. Sorry. And I think I'm passing it back to Jeremy. 
Yes, thanks, Simon. That's awesome. It's kind of exciting to see how quickly um, the users kind of engage directly with Hyperfish to actually kind of make that work, uh, and and the value that you're seeing already in kind of handling that across the organization and how that kind of really helps to kind of run that in the organization. I think for people that are watching this, there are, if you go right now to um, the app.hyperfish.com, I believe uh, we're going to post in the chat window at the bottom the link so you can very easily kind of jump to that, is that you can go and run a free analyzer right now um, to allow you to see in your organization what your Active Directory looks like. So this is just a sample report from one of our customers with the information scrubbed. I think I actually put Woodgrove back as a sample uh, made up user there. But you can see here that uh, in this example that very few of the 3,000 accounts that have in their organization had profile photos um, and very, very few had manager reports. So those are the two we see as most critical in the organization. Um, and so <laughs> if this is of interest to you, I'd highly recommend going and checking that out, checking that out now. So with that, we'll just open it up for q and I'm going to expand my uh, window here and see if we have any questions in the, the Q&A. And um, yes, thank you, Elise, for posting that uh, link there in the chat window. So if you do have any questions, uh, Joy, myself, and Simon, we'll just sit alone and, um, and see whether anything comes through. And it can be to any of us. So if you've got questions specifically to Simon with his particular use cases or to Joy and how it's been implemented, um, please feel free to... Um, post away now. And while we're waiting for those uh, to come through, I, uh, Joy, uh, from uh, your experience in the help desk, and I guess Simon with your current experience, how have you found it in terms of uh, the the amount of help desk requests you see come through for this kind of profile change? It, uh, from Simon, from your perspective, have you seen that reduce now that Hyperfish um, is in play? Um, no, well, so we don't do the uh, employee information self-service. Uh, most of that is is coming through the help desk. So whatever we can do to improve and kind of bring that information centrally together and populate that information, um, that makes it quicker on us. It, we can close those tickets quicker. Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, it makes a difference the fact that you can do that, uh, like kind of kind of respond to it a lot in an automatic automated way, rather than kind of have to manually push that. So there has a question that comes through. It says, so Hyperfish is an independent app, correct? It's not part of any apps services from Office 365. Yes, so the way that we uh, work uh, is uh, essentially we analyze uh, from a service that's running in the cloud your Active Directory or Azure Active Directory. Um, there, if you're in an on-premises scenario where you have got Active Directory, we have an agent that you deploy that has access to the Active Directory in your network and our service talks to that agent. And then once we've uh, realized which users have missing or uh, invalid information, we'll send them an email. And then from there, when they launch the Hyperfish interface, that's actually running in the cloud uh, inside of Azure as part of our service. And then once they kind of submit their changes and uh, if there is approval approved, uh, then uh, it will either write directly back to the Microsoft Graph using a account that you've given us uh, access and permission to use, or we will talk back to the agent that you've deployed, uh, which is running as a Surface account, for instance, and that will then, in turn, then go and update your AD inside of your network. So we do have that flexibility to support kind of the different environmental configurations that we see commonly across across organizations. So yes, it is separate to Office 365, um, but it can work side by side uh, with both kind of the user accounts that are provisioned in in Office 365 or in uh, if you're using SharePoint server still or a uh, combination of both. I'm just going to see if there are any others. And Simon, to go, or uh, sorry, Jeremy, to go back to your point on the help desk, um, you do get a lot of information about a company when you work on their help desk. And if I've got any former help desk folks out there, high five, folks. <laughs> uh, it's work, but you do. You get questions. Why Why does my manager show up wrong? Why is my job title wrong? Um, why does he still have access to this folder on the file share when he left our department three years ago? That was a fun one. Uh, <laughs> there's 
there's all kinds of stuff out there and hyperfish can really um it's such a clean solution and it's so innovative just to be able to bridge those gaps and get that information and it takes the burden away sure you have to type a few things or click some buttons but that's it and it's beautiful um it's really a solution. We've worked very hard at the team. We're very proud of what they've done. So it's nice to hear those kind of compliments. So thank you, Joy. There, there is another question here, which was, um, what other systems besides AD can you connect to? Can you connect to success, SAP success factors to get employee data? Uh, right now, uh, as the product stands, if you went and downloaded it today, uh, what we do is we use Active Directory as the what we call the system of record. So when our analyzer runs, we connect only to AD to check each individual attribute across the profiles that we you tell us that we can scan. And then once that is committed in the system and written to AD, we have got the ability to um, execute and write to other places as well. So for instance, um, as an out of the box experience, we when we write to AD, we also write to um, SharePoint user profiles, um, but more importantly, which is kind of a hidden thing and typical Microsoft having multiple departments running in their engineering teams, is that we'll also write to Exchange Online because in actual fact the photo that is displayed in Outlook.com and in Skype for Business and Teams is actually sourced from Exchange Online photo store, whereas when you go to SharePoint or you go to uh, OneNote, that photo is actually coming from SharePoint user profiles. So we had to kind of push this information out to various places to get it to work automatically. And if you're using Office 365 right now, um, one of the things you'll notice is that uh, if you go and update your photo right now in Delve, it can take up to three days for that to update in your Delve profile. And so we've done a lot of work to kind of speed that up. Now, in saying that, uh, we do have customers that are writing to SAP uh, and to PeopleSoft, and uh, we have a prototype for a customer working with who has Workday, where we basically call to their APIs to update that information. Uh, one thing we're working on is the ability that uh, the system of record doesn't have to be Active Directory. And this is the work we're doing around Hyperfish connectors. And that will allow us not only to analyze the maybe the mobile phone number that's in AD, but we'll be able to analyze the job title manager uh, from SAP success factors. And in that instance, uh, when the user gets the prompt, they can provide their update. Obviously, in that case, we'd probably suspect that HR might want to kind of be part of this process and approve that change. And then we would write back to SAP success factors for those two fields and also to AD, which would mean that your org charts would work across the variety of systems that you have inside the organization, um, but specifically inside of like Outlook contact cards and Microsoft Teams and Delve where the manager field is predominantly used. We, we do find that a lot of HR teams um, do want to be involved and, and see the value in this and that they're kind of bogged down a lot of time in kind of keeping up with people's office location and sometimes HR feel like they own that and that it should be a system of record in SAP. Um, but they want the users to provide the updates and for them just to gate the update happening in all those systems. So if you are interested in that, um, please reach out to, to us and we can, um, we can show you some of the work we're doing, um, but again, that will be out shortly. We, we ship updates into the service every two weeks, so uh, there's, there's continual improvements uh, as we get more systems we're going to connect to, uh, but also as we get requests for uh, new scenarios uh, to help with, with things such as what Simon showed there with the, the visualizer of the OUs, which um, was something that a lot of customers asked us for when they had very complicated OUs to be visually able to see where it's analyzing and where it's not. So I don't see any other questions coming through, and we are near uh, close to the hour. Um, so again, thank you so much, Simon and Joy. Joy, do you want to wrap up the, the webinar as this, uh, you kicked it off? Yes, I think that'll work. That'd be good symmetry. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys being here, Jeremy and Simon. Uh, your insights and information are invaluable. You're very appreciated. And for those of you that are listening in, if you have some colleagues, coworkers, or someone that you feel could use to listen through this, maybe you think this might be a good solution for your organization, uh, we have been recording it, and we will be releasing the audio version of this. Um, just keep an eye on social media. We'll have links to it soon. 
And I'm also going to shout out Hyperfish has some great blogs out there with some really good information that you can read through if you just want to do a little more research. So definitely check that out. Pate Group as well. We've got some good blogs and information out there. You might find some interesting information. But again, we thank you. Uh, we hope you have found this to be a useful hour, and we hope we can connect with you in the future. So we're going to give you all back about four minutes of the hour, and we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here.